رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين some reflections from two ayat that belong to Surah Yunus. And before I share with you what's going on in these two ayat in Surah Yunus, I want to tell you something about Surah Yunus itself and you know where these ayat are situated. Some of our ulama, they divide uh, Makki surahs into three categories. The first four years, the next four years, the next four years. So you have the conversation between the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the people that he first delivered the message to taking place in phases. And of course, the first phase is lighter and the next phase gets more serious and they start getting more aggressive. And the most aggressive and the most difficult phase would be the last phase, of course, the thing that comes after that is the point where he can no longer even stay there. He makes hijrah, right? And most argue that Surah Yunus and Surah Hud and other surahs that have similar context are later Makkan. In other words, the, the conflict has become very aggressive. The ideological battle between the Messenger والسلام, and the, the kuffar, the non-Muslims, who have become basically not just disbelievers, but they hate Islam at this point. And they're saying all kinds of vile things about Islam. And that's become more and more uh, intense. The situation has become more tense. And in this context, basically Allah takes one of the many problems of shirk, and you'll find this in Makki surahs, especially longer Makki surahs. Allah will take one of the many problems of shirk and highlight it and destroy it, crush it. And as one of the things he does in this surah, is he crushes the idea of a shafi'ah from the very beginning of the surah. And what's a shafi'ah? Shafi'ah means someone who will come in between you and Allah on the day of judgment. Now let me give you a simple example. Imagine you can't find a job. And you have a cousin who's a manager at some, let me, get, let me just say Verizon, okay? So he's a manager at Verizon and he hooks you up, he gets you the job. And now you got this job because of your cousin who's the manager and you work under him. Now you mess up, from the first day you start messing up. And the project fails. And this manager has to now report to senior management, right? But you say he's my cousin, he's not gonna, he's gonna cover me up, he's not gonna get me in trouble. Like, I don't have to go talk to the CEO. I don't have to co talk to the head of the department. My cousin can do it for me. This is a shafi'ah. <laughs> He's in between. You can screw up, you can mess up. And because you got connections, you should be safe. That's the idea of a shafi'ah. And many religions have this concept. The problem, the, the, the idea behind even, what's the need for people to have a shafi'ah? Some people make, you know, in, in the past, people made the idols, shafa'a, other more philosophical, you know, uh, Mushrikeen said, no, no, it's not the idols. These idols just remind us of our elders. And those elders were very close to Allah. And so we're not that close to Allah. So if we make our elders happy, they'll make Allah happy and we don't have to worry about it. Right? But even in the end, that's also a, putting someone in between you and Allah. That's the problem. Then of course we have something like the Christian religion in which the Shafi'i placed in between themselves and Allah is Isa alayhi salam. I'm sinful, I was born into sin, the Christian says. I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be dying in sin. There's no way I can ever come out of that. Might as well just live it up and believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior. Jesus can take care of my problems with upper management. I don't have to deal with upper management. You follow this idea of putting someone in between. This is crushed in this surah. And what is told to us is there's, there's the concept of the false shafi'ah. The false shafi. Someone who you think will take care of business for you. They will go and put in the recommendation for you and you'll be safe. You think they're going to do that, but actually when the time comes, they're disappearing, they're running away. anhum. They're going to be lost from them. Day of judgment, they're looking for their shafi. Where'd my connection go? Where they go? And they're burning with their connection. <coughs> and in this surah, you'll also find Allah Azza wa actually even raises those that people did shirk with. In this surah, for example, you find Allah says those who, you know, people, for example, worship Isa alayhi salam. People even after, you know, after the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came, this final Messenger of Allah came, this disease even entered the Muslim community. And within some ranks of the Muslims, we took some of our scholars and some of our, you know, a, a great shuyukh of the past. And we basically literally go and worship at their graves. And we make dua to them. 
that if we make them happy and we put some flowers or whatever we do there, then they will take care of business with Allah for us. Allah will raise all of these people and Allah will address them too and scold them also. And what's the point of even addressing them? Did you tell them to do shirk? You know, we find Isa Alayhi Salaam kalam with Isa Alayhi Salaam in Madani Surah also. Anta qulta lil nasi? Did you say to people, do shirk with me? Take me and my mother, ilahini min dunillah? Why would Allah do that? <coughs> we know that a lot of these ulama, these zuhad, these people that were close to Allah, the awliya Allah, these prophets of Allah that people do shirk with, they never even knew that shirk was being done with them. But on the day of judgment, one of the things that will crush the hopes of the, the mushrik, the mushrik said, I'm going to be in trouble, I know that. But if I can find my connection, I'll be alright. He finds his connection and he finds out Allah is questioning him too. He goes, oh my God, I'm in trouble. I, I got nowhere to go now. So he crushes not only them physically and he punishes them, he crushes their hopes before he throws them into hellfire. This is the means by which their hopes and aspirations are crushed. This is the conversation that is happening in this surah. And in the midst of this conversation, the correct shafi'ah is offered. What are the correct shafi'ah? There are two things. There are two things. On the one hand, it's the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa And on the other hand, it's the message itself. The message itself. But then, what's the difference between us and a mushrik? They want a shafi'ah, and we say that the Messenger of Allah will do shafi'ah for us also. So there has to be a difference, right? <coughs> we say that on the Day of Judgment, for this ummah, for the members of this ummah, the Messenger of Allah will make a case for us. He will come in between Allah's anger and ourselves. And He will make dua for us. And He will basically tell Allah, these guys are with me. These people are with me. Even in Ayatul Kursi, Right? We, we make that exception for the Messenger of Allah. Right? Illa bi idnihi. Except by his permission. Right? So this is the Messenger of Allah. So what's the difference between a, a, a Shafi'ah from a Mushrik and a Shafi'ah that we believe in, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? The fundamental difference is this. The point of any false Shafi'ah is that you don't become answerable to Allah. You only have to make who happy? Who do you have to praise? The guy in between. The point of the correct shafi'ah is he only came to connect you directly to Allah. His purpose, his goal is to connect you to Allah directly. And to teach you how to have that relationship primarily. And to let you know that you are answerable to him. And so the correct shafi'ah keeps saying things like, مَا أَمْلِكُ لَكُمْ لَا أَمْلِكُ لَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا I have no authority when it comes to Allah with you. If you have a good relationship with Allah in this dunya, in this dunya you can do what I'm telling you to do, this Shafi'i says, then on judgment day maybe I can put in a good word for you. But don't you rely on me without doing your part. Don't rely on me. You know this messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, you, you would think when you, when you try to save people, you try to save family. You know those of you that come from the Muslim world and understand corruption know this very well. If you got family connections, like you're, get, you're at the airport, the guy asks you for the passport so you can get on the plane, but he says, How much money you got in your pocket? Okay, you got 200, 2,000, put it, stick it in the passport and then give it to me. But then you tell him, No, no, my chacha is the, my uncle is the supervisor. He's standing over there. Oh, he says, Oh, you got connections. He let, let you go. <laughs> right? When you got family connections, they let you go. Now, the messenger also has, people also have family connections with the messenger. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Don't they? He has a daughter. Right? He has a son-in-law. He has a wife. They've got connections. So if anybody should enjoy good connections, it should be his family. You know, people get special treatment just because they're family. <coughs> you know, we call her the first lady, the president's wife, right? First lady, first family, special treatment. Because they're connected to somebody important. He turns to his daughter and he says to her, Radiallahu ta'ala anha, he says, Ya Fatima tubnu uh, bintu Muhammad, Ittaqillahi, Ittaqillaha, fa inni la amliku laki min Allahi shay'a. You should have taqwa of Allah because I will have no authority when it comes to Allah for you. I can't help you. You should fear Allah. That's the correct shafi'ah. When per a person realizes that, then their, Im their impression of the Messenger of Allah changes, sallallahu alayhi wa a lot of Muslims in the world, a lot of Muslims in the world are messing up. They know they're doing haram and they have no shame in doing it. No shame, they'll do it. And in the back of their head, you know what they've got? At least the messenger will make shafa'ah for me. And you'll find these people will go out of their way to praise the messenger. 
We all praise the Messenger, والسلام, But there are some group of people, they, they love Na'at and Nasheed a little extra. <laughs> right? And you'll find those, those people that love it a little extra, they also don't like to obey Allah that much either. So in their income, in their business practices, in their inheritance divisions, in the way they deal with their families, in the way that their ibadat are, their, word, their prayers are, in their clothing, in their fashion, in the way they're, you know, they, 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 they run their families, in the way their daughters dress, in the way their wives dress, everything is not what the messenger would want, but they love the messenger on the other hand. Okay, they're ready to celebrate. This is, this is exactly what the messenger came to crush. This is what he came to destroy. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now this is one Shafi'ah. What's the other Shafi'ah? The book itself. This book will be a shaheed for us. Like Allah says, for example, Inna Qur'an al-Fajri kana mashhudan. The Qur'an, the, the Qur'an recited at Fajr time will be a witness. Will testify. This one recited me. Qur'an mashhud. Isn't that amazing? So in that context, I want to bring up this ayah to you. Keep in mind, when we read this ayah, we often think that this ayah is talking to Muslims. But the first audience of this ayah is actually the Quraysh, the Kuffar, those who hated this message. Now think about that as I share this ayah with you. Ya ayyuhan nas, people. Not even ya ayyuhan ladina amanu, ya ayyuhan nas, people. Qad ja'atkum maw'idatun min rabbikum. Incredible. A very powerful bit of advice, counsel has come to you. I want to talk to you a little bit about the word maw'idha. Allah says that He's not describing this. Quran is a book now. No. A message has come to you. A book has come to you. He doesn't use those words in this ayah. He says, counsel, sermon, advice, therapy. That has come to you. That is what's come to you from your master. What's the word maw'idha? There's two words in Arabic. Wa'ad and maw'idha. The Urdu speakers here know waz. Khatib waz de Right? Wa'ad. Wa'ad means good advice. Advice that reaches into the heart. The stronger version of that is maw'idha. And what that means is, every time it's recited, it goes inside the heart. And there is some advice, you listen to it, doesn't make a difference to you. You listen to it, you say, yeah, yeah, I heard this before. The khatib just starts talking and he says, oh my God, I've heard this one so many times. And before he even opens his mouth, you turn your ears off. You change the channel in your head. And you start thinking about whatever else is going on in life. But sometimes, sometimes you listen to a khutbah, you listen to a talk, you listen to a friend give you advice, you listen to your mother say something, you listen to a shaykh say something, and you hear some words, maybe you're listening to a recording somewhere, watching a YouTube video somewhere, and you listen to something and it hits you like a ton of bricks. Like it's talking directly to you. And it goes all the way inside. That one is maw'idha. Allah says this Qur'an is what? Is maw'idha. Every time we're standing in salat, and we're listening, it's supposed to go right in there. Get deep inside the heart. Now imagine someone who has a disease. And imagine that this Qur'an now got inside, like, like a medicine goes inside, right? Once it goes inside your body, what does the medicine do? It starts curing. قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ مَوْعِضَةٌ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصدور. And a cure for what is in the chest. The next part of the ayah. Now that it got inside, what is it doing? It's curing the chest. And now here, listen to this. You know, Al-Qur'an yufassiru ba'duhu ba'dan. In another place in the Qur'an, in Surah Al-Isra, Allah says, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ What we sent in the Qur'an is that which is cure. People take that part of the ayah, and you know what they do? They take like cups, and they put ayat of Qur'an on the inside. And then they drink water in it, and they drink soda in it, and they say, after this, I will no longer lose hair. And after this, I will not have sinus problems. Because Qur'an is shifa. And the ayah says, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ Right? They take Qur'an to be shifa in this way. Now, the ruqiyah is true. Ruqiyah is something that the Prophet performed, والسلام, But you know, this, when Allah says it's a cure, it's explained in the ayah I'm sharing with you. What kind of shifa? Shifa only ma fi sudur. A cure for what is inside the chest. I'm going to give you some very practical examples. There are some people in our community, they have a family problem. They have a problem with their in-laws. They have a problem with their wife. They have a problem with their husband. They have a problem with their kids. They have a problem with their brother. And it's messing with their heart. They think about their mother-in-law and they just get angry. The mother thinks about her daughter-in-law and she just gets upset. She can't get over it. She doesn't want to do anything, she just talks bad about her and, feel, does, doesn't, and, and talking bad about her doesn't make her feel any better. 
it makes her you know, aggressive too. Or you talk about somebody who hurts your feelings and just ill feelings inside your heart. Allah says this advice came inside your heart and what does it start doing? It starts curing your heart. You know, we're trying in Ramadan, we're standing in front of Allah, exhausting ourselves, 20 rakat. Those of us that are doing that, why? So we can have a connection with Allah and have a good clean heart. You can't do that if you have all these grudges inside your heart. Your heart doesn't have enough space. Your heart's got to be cleaned up so you can connect to Allah. So Allah says, I gave you something that will clean it up. The jealousy, the anger, the greed, the laziness. All these things that are diseasing our heart. The, the, this advice from Allah goes in and starts cleaning it up. Shifa'un lima fi sudur. And your chest is at rest. Your heart is at rest. Your sentiments, your feelings are calm. You no longer feel disturbed. You're not angry all the time. You're not, you know, you're not at unrest. And then he says, وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةً And then it's a guidance. Guidance means it gives you directions. This is what you should do. This is what you shouldn't do. This is better for you. This is not good for you. You should try to do more like this. You should be, try to be more like these people. And let me tell you about those people. Don't be like them. This is guidance. But what kind of heart will take that guidance? The heart that is ready to take the medicine. And it's already taken some advice. Now it's following Allah's guidance. Now this heart that first the medicine got in, the advice got in, then the cure started happening, then this person started following Allah's guidance. This is a great, per this is person is on, you know, they were, they're a blessed person. This Allah's special mercy is on this person, a person who can do that, that they can hear the Qur'an, take its advice, apply it, and then, you know, make it a, make it a guide for themselves. So Allah says, hudan wa hudan wa rahmatun. Guidance and a mercy. Finally, it's a mercy. So it's a mercy for those who go through this process. Then you get the mercy from Quran. للمؤمنين, for those who believe. Now, remember how the ayah began? Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu or ya ayyuhal nas? Ya ayyuhal nas. But the ayah ends, wa hudan wa rahmatan للمؤمنين. The one who let the advice go in, and let the cure work, and then accepted the guidance, and therefore became worthy of Allah's mercy. This is the believer. They're the ones that get mercy from Allah. Subhan what an invitation to the Quraysh. They hate this message. They think it's going to make life difficult. I have to change my ways. You know, <coughs> you know, people, human beings are strange creatures. Strange creatures. We have habits and we can't let go. Even if your habits are terrible. Even if your habits are horrible, you can't let go. I know doctors, they have patients like diabetic patients, heart patients or whatever. And they tell them, you better change your diet or you're going to die. Then they see him three months later, and their diet's the same exact thing. Swiss rolls and Twinkies and whatever. No vegetables in there. Vegetables are haram, right? So the doctor will say, don't come to me. I've, I've met doctors like this. Don't come to me again. You have no respect for the guidance I'm giving you. You're killing yourself. You're not willing to change your habits. And you've proven that you have no desire to live. You just want to die. Go ahead. People are strange. Even if they know they're destroying themselves, sometimes they just, they go in that direction anyway. And just like that in medicine, just like they are in this disease of the heart too. Now for those who accept this guidance, this is what I'll conclude with, فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا Then because of that, for the people who take the guidance of Qur'an, the counsel of Qur'an, the advice, the sermon of Qur'an, for people who actually take it, and allow it to heal them, let them calm down, let themselves take the guidance, and allow themselves to become worthy of Allah's mercy, they should celebrate. فَلِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا They just found something they never found before in life. These people never found peace in life. Wallahi, if you really, honestly, don't just look at the Qur'an as a book of knowledge, as a book of barakat, as a book of, you know, so many things. You honestly take the Qur'an as a book of very relevant, powerful, personal advice. When you start doing that, you will find a peace you never found before in your life. And when you find that, you'll say, nothing I have ever done in my life, nothing I've ever collected in my life, compares to this. So Allah says, فَلِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُونَ By the way, farah in Arabic, in, in the Qur'an especially, is a kind of happiness that is not praised. In Allah, لَا يُحِبُّ الْفَرِحِينَ Allah doesn't love those who get overly happy. You know, He doesn't love those. But if, the, if you really want to get overly excited and happy about something, here's one thing you can be overly happy and excited about, that you allowed the Qur'an to become a guide in your life. مَوْعِذَا for you. That you should celebrate. فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُونَ it's better than everything else they're gathering. And I'll conclude with this. Allah didn't just say khairu min amwalihim. He said mimma yajma'un, what they're gathering. He highlighted something very particular. People don't just gather money. You know, some people gather video games. 
Some people gather a movie collection. Back in the day, some of you geeks gathered like stamps and international coins. You know, some kids used to gather baseball cards. Nowadays, then it became Yu-Gi-Oh cards and Pokemon cards and Yu-Yu Hakusei cards and all that kind of stuff, right? People connect, collect Facebook friends, followers. People collect this kind of stuff. People are into collecting things. Some people collect clothes, some, some people collect like shoes, purses, memorabilia, right? Collector's items. Some people collect decoration items in their homes. SubhanAllah, where's this collectors? Because, and you know why I specifically mentioned that? Because when you are into collecting something, whether it's money or other things, you think about it a lot. You go back to it a lot, right? And Allah says, this is better than everything you're gathering. Why? Because this will be on your mind. And when this is on your mind, it will bring you peace. You know why a lot of people, when I was doing psychology studies, we studied collectors. <laughs> you know why people collect things? To get, your mind off, get their minds off of their problems. You know that's why they collect stuff? Those people collect like uh, figurines, and people collect stamps or whatever. It gets their minds off of their like families, like problems or job problems, or this is that. This is their stress relief. This is what they collect. Allah says, "You want stress relief? Take some therapy from Allah." And I told you that's my last point. This is my last point. I promise this time. And that is, you know, nowadays people go to therapists when they have problems, right? You know what therapists do nowadays? It's such a such an amazing ripoff. It's incredible. The therapist will sit down with you and say, tell me about your problem, how do you feel? And you'll sit there for an hour telling him how much you hate your wife or your life or whatever else. Right? And you're gonna go on for an hour. And he says after the hour, he says, so how does that make you feel? And then you're like, it makes me feel pretty bad. He goes, well, letting it out, does that help at all? And most people like, no, it didn't help at all. Okay, well, come back for another session then. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> right? 350 bucks an hour. What a scam. Right? As opposed to Allah, you know, you tell, you and I tell Allah our problems. The mushrik, the kafir, the, you know, they'll go and tell a therapist their problems. And that's the end of it. That, the therapist has no answers. He only has questions. How does it make you feel? What are you feeling? How do you feel now? He has no answers. <laughs> you know? Or if he has answers, they always, maybe you should do this, maybe you should try this pill, if it doesn't work, come back to me. If it drives you crazy, you know, then come back to me and I'll give you another pill. You know. But we tell Allah our problems. And Allah gives us mawa'idah, counsel, therapy, answers. This is what you should do. This is what you should do. And if you do this, your heart will be calm. You'll reach peace. وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِ قَلْبَهُ This is therapy from Allah. That's what the Qur'an is supposed to be. That's why we're supposed to leave everything else and just stand in front of Allah and just recite His therapy, recite His counsel. So we could, we could heal, we could clean ourselves out. May Allah Azza wa make us of those who enjoy the counsel from Allah's words. May Allah make us of those who every, as every year goes by and every day goes by, we understand and love more and more of the Qur'an. May Allah make it easy for all of us to memorize more and more of the Qur'an. May Allah take the laziness away from us that we, we become lazy when we recite Qur'an and sleepy when we recite Qur'an and distracted when we recite Qur'an. May Allah make us of those who when they recite Qur'an, they drop everything else and they fall more and more in love with reciting Allah's book. May Allah give this love of Qur'an to our, our, our wives, our children, our families. May Allah instill this love in us and may Allah make us a means for each other that we can increase this love. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن الحكيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته